Let's talk about Enceladus on this Talking Science Quick Take. Discovered in 1789 by German-born English astronomer William Herschel, it was shrouded in mystery until the Voyager spacecraft flew past in 1980 and 81, and further detail was revealed in 2005 by the Cassini spacecraft. Of most excitement was the discovery of plumes of Cairo volcanoes in the southern polar region. It turns out these water-rich geysers shoot a mixture of hydrogen, volatiles, solid material, as well as sodium chloride crystals into space. Some of this material falls back to the surface as snow, while the rest escapes and contributes to Saturn's E-ring. These geysers, along with escaping heat and very few impact craters in the southern polar region, show Enceladus to be a geologically active moon. In 2014, it was revealed Cassini had found evidence of a large subsurface ocean of liquid water, about 10 kilometres thick, which leads us to the most recent announcement about Saturn's moon, where tidal stresses may be causing constant ice quakes, likely caused by the parent planet itself and the other bigger moons. This generates heat in the interior, cracking the surface and generating those geysers. Geophysicist Kira Olsen and a team of researchers analysed data collected by scientists seismometers along the Ross Ice Shelf in Antarctica between 2014 and 2016 and compared those to satellite images of the area. They paid particular attention to two seismometers placed next to large rifts on the ice slab. They related the seismic activity to the stress occurring along these rifts. The majority of ice quakes occurred when the rifts were pulling apart, which happens when tides are falling. Now, while there are no measurements of seismic activity on Enceladus, Olsen and her colleagues created models that compared the types of fractures they saw on the Moon's surface with those on the Ross Ice Shelf here in Antarctica. The results showed that the largest amount of seismic activity on Enceladus likely corresponded to the tides. Peak seismic activity there occurs when the Moon is 100 degrees past the nearest approach to Saturn, during its orbit. The ocean underneath the ice at this point acts something like water inside a sloshing balloon. The ice fractures are created at the points of highest stress where the balloon would break apart. The ice quakes aren't massive along these cracks, even at the peak periods of stress. Olsen describing them more like almost continuous little pops and fractures. The hope will be for future missions to Enceladus to place seismometers within 10 kilometers of these fractures to better understand what's happening. Similar work could then be conducted on Titan, Saturn's largest moon, a world also covered with ice that may conceal liquid oceans and is another top pick for potential extraterrestrial life. NASA's Dragonfly mission is scheduled to visit Titan in 2036. As for Enceladus, the case remains open as to whether the geothermal activity is enough to warm this ocean for life to evolve far below the frozen surface. This is a Talkin' Science Quick Take. I'm Matt Miller. For more, please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. To get even more, click join to become a member. Or for our podcast listeners, beam over to the trek.zone slash support. Keep up to date with Twitter. Catch new podcasts daily on YouTube. Plus, we're beaming to your favorite podcast app five days a week. Just search for Trek Zone and subscribe.